Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to discuss about the PRP number 9. So as you know that first I made uh, HACCP series. If you are uh, you have not watched it, please go back to my channel and you can see all the videos related to HACCP. And we are now discussing about the PRP, which is the second part of the FSSC. So let's start with the actual topic. Then today are we, we are going to discuss PRP number 9, which is management of purchase materials. So, uh, management of purchase materials contains three sub clauses, which is general requirement, second is selection and management of suppliers, and third is incoming material requirements. It includes raw ingredients, packaging material, chemicals, all that stuff that you receive, it's called incoming material requirements. So let's start with the 9.1. So, uh, again, general requirements is usually the summary of following requirements. So, I will not uh, spend so much time on these lines. Rather, we will uh, directly jump into 9.2. But here, this, this clause, remember, it's a very short clause, but it's very, very important from audit perspective. That's why, please be focus on this clause. Otherwise, might be you will receive non-conformances during the audits. Just I will describe here something or mention or highlight in this 9.1 clause that you need to be keeping your mind while making documentation. If you notice, there are two words. One is controlled. Controlled means monitoring. This is called whenever in the procedure you see word control usually is the shows you the monitoring inspection. The second is verification verified. So that means there are two kinds of documents required. One is monitoring, for example, monitoring of temperature and then verification. That means verification of the monitoring that you are doing. So it's a second check, usually controlled or monitoring done by uh, the QC department and then verification usually by the QA uh, person. And against what? It is against specified requirements. It can be anything. So I will describe in the later clauses. So the 9.2 clause, which is selection and management of suppliers. So as usual, I'm not going to read it because I will leave it for you. You can read it for your own development. And I have made some point in bullet points just to explain what you need to do to comply with these all requirements of this clause. So there are four major points that you need to make. Like first is supplier list. Second is raw material list, or you can call it or name it ingredient list. Third is packaging material list. And fourth, approved chemical. It can be cleaning chemical, or it can be lubricants. It can be uh, CIP chemicals. So all chemicals that you are using in your factory, you need to mention them in the approved chemical list. So I will describe one by one how to make that list. So let's start with the first one, which is approved supplier list. So for you, I already made that. Uh, format so we do not spend so much time uh, during the video so again as usual for the approved document you need to mention the name of the document in this case it's approved supplier list you can also mention supplier list only if you want but it's it's fine with the approved supplier list as well second mention the company logo on this side and on this side you need to mention document number version number and effective date so I just to make it simplify what I did serial number as usual you, when you make a list you usually uh, include serial number. The second is supplier name. So I just made it A to differentiate further. So, so this is the case or, or it's very normal that usually we have multiple production sites for one supplier. What I did I further divided into two cells and named it like small A and small B. And you need to mention here their full address of the supplier and you need to mention which kind of material you are purchasing from that supplier i just mentioned randomly cocoa powder and then you need to mention certifications they have so first this is ifs basic level i just randomly out of my head mentioned here and then you need to mention here supplier status it's approved or not approved or in process so why do we need to mention here because you know in our industry we have procedures to approve supplier from qa perspective so if it's approved, maybe in your procedure, you have mentioned if supplier has IFS certification, so we will consider it as approved. Or you mention in your supplier list that if supplier is new, you will audit them and then you will approve. So you, so according to your procedure, you need to mention here the status, approved or not approved or uh, on hold or blocked, anything that is according to your now, second format is raw material or ingredient list. So again, this is same kind, just I 
uh, update the product uh, sorry the list name or the document name and again on left and right the same uh, you need to follow the same format so just the change is uh, the first column will be raw material or ingredient name then i mentioned supplier name i again mentioned it as a then supplier from approved supplier list mentioned here yes or no all my years you need to mention here just to uh, follow it properly or like maybe during the audit you have this a uh, good reminder for yourself so i mentioned here because these are three points are mostly everywhere in the uh, industry in every industry so i mentioned specification of product then second thing i mentioned inspection sheet at the time of receiving and third is certificate of analysis so these are the control measures against this uh, against this product so in this way you need to complete the raw material or ingredient list and just i want to mention one thing that maybe you have in your mind question that supplier list and your raw material list can be clubbed or not but i would suggest to make them separately otherwise one list is going to be very complicated and and now the third list that you need to make to comply with this 9.2 clause is the packaging material list remember we usually forget the packaging material uh, during our overall has of study and evaluation and all that stuff so please this is very important uh, nowadays due to this sustainability uh, policies or some authority or legal requirements so make a approved packaging material list as well collect all the information about the packaging material that you are using in your processing facility so i just randomly mention which is also very usually in every factory first is shrink wrap film i just and i mentioned corrugated cartons like cotton box I mentioned supplier name P just uh, to identify it easily. P, you need to mention here the actual name when you are making list, and then again supplier from approved list or not. Then control measures. Again, I mentioned same, but for the packaging material, you can uh, exclude them as well according to your procedure. For example, maybe there is possibility in your approved supply in your standard operating procedure, you have mentioned that that if shrink wrap have Uh, certificate of analysis and food grade certificate it is acceptable for us then you no need to have this inspection sheet but this is required uh, some auditor usually ask separately that they must want to see that sheet and sometime they give you minor non conformance if it is not there so i would suggest to have inspection sheet as well do not exclude it as well just to avoid because all auditors are not auditing in the same way so it's better because more is fine Uh, less is problematic but more is fine if you have extra like i know it's a work but anyway it is fine because anyway you need to make inspection sheet for raw material so you can consider packaging material as a raw material and you can use same inspection sheet for the packaging material as well so now the fourth point which is approved chemical list so for this collect all the information regarding the chemicals that you are using in your facility all means you need to include cleaning chemicals then cip chemicals then uh, bait that you are using for the pest control all these need to be included in the uh, your approved chemical list i remember this is very crucial because sometimes we we use randomly some chemicals in our facility especially for the pest control activities and we usually forget to mention the approved chemical list so it will be a non conformance if identified by the or all mention material name then mention supplier name full name and then mention if it's from approved supplier list as yes or no and in the last you need to mention control measures so how here i mentioned specifically food grade certificate which is required in case of cleaning chemicals lubricants uh, and any chemical that you're using inside your facility and the third is certificate of analysis so by this we are completing approved chemical list and remember if there is any chemical by accidentally or due to any reason you are using in your facility and it is not in your approved sub approved chemical list it will be a non conformance by the auditor so please be very careful for this usually it was the practice like we considered approved where it is signed by the authorized person but now the market is changing and with and with that the approval from the auditor and the industry as well so you need to mention at the bottom of your document that if it is not printed that an electronic version should be con, uh, should be considered as a approved and if you print it then it must be signed so please do this in your documentation and procedures
now the last clause is 9.3 which is incoming material requirements so i will not read it instead i make some major points and to comply with this you need to have two sops which is goods receiving handling and storage and second is sop for handling of non conforming products then you need inspection sheet for raw material receiving inspection and the last is specification of raw material incoming goods packaging material and any material that you are using in your facility so let's discuss one by one so i will start with the raw material inspection or raw material receiving inspection report that how you need to make it i made it pre form already uh, made format you can use it as it is for yourself in your industry just mention the a uh, document name and like we were using to mention left and right logo and the uh, document number version and all that stuff after that you need to uh, implement it in your facility this middle uh, table you can change or modify it according to your product nature or company procedure and the most important thing that you need to focus here is accepted and rejected quantity please remember this is very important because it's required for the traceability purpose and if it's not mentioned it can be considered as you are accepting products that are not comply or you are not uh, fulfilling the traceability requirement so please remember to mention here the uh, quantities second thing you if you see at the bottom i mention total quantity uh total quantity then i mentioned how much accept accepted then how much rejected how much you returned and after that how much is in the process after that you need to sign that document once you inspect the goods and there was one requirement for the vehicle inspection as well and many companies are using separate format for the goods inspection and separate format for the vehicle inspection but here if you see i added a small for a small cell and named it as a vehicle inspection so you can mention all your observation during the inspection in this table and you are going to be comply with the clause and remember during the vehicle inspection you need to focus on these three main points first is cleaning of the vehicle second is pest infestation if there is or there is not and third is temperature if it if it is temperature control product and then you need to mention the vehicle temperature that is required by your procedure now i will move toward the last part of my video which is product specification that how you need to prepare product specification for all kind of raw materials and the final product so this is i already prepared a format for you you can you can copy it as it is and use it and it is complied with all the requirements of this clause and once you filled in this format you need to signature it and and it will be a approved specification or if it is an electronic version you need to mention that statement at the bottom of this document or in your procedure as well and if you don't know how to fill in this format i will not describe here again because i already covered this part in the hasab series so please go back to my hasab series and watch that video where i described this product specification and thank you so much with this to watch my video and next time i will come up with the clause number 10 and i also notice you requested some other topics i will try to make videos on them as well and i'm really sorry that i'm uploading videos very with the very long gaps i will try to increase the frequency so we can cover up as much topic as possible thank you so much